now things work, but it's difficult to find the ones that can get things to work. And one of my favorite things, if you look at usability, is the Swedish payment service Swish. How many of you have Swish here? Yeah, okay. It's like a magical moment. It just works. Six banks, everything works together. And the guys that built it, I've asked them to come here uh, to talk about it. And they say, well, we've, that's so old news. We do a lot of other cool stuff. So I've, I've given the stage to Jarke and Magnus from HiQ because they are extremely good at making things really work. So without further ado, Magnus is the CEO of HiQ Stockholm and Jarke is the CEO of HiQ Gothenburg. They started out by building Yoss and other things. And we're going to be very exciting to hear what you're going to build now. Hi, how are you all guys doing? You feel digital anxiety? A bit? Sort of? Well, if you don't, you're in deep shit. <laughs> I have digital anxiety because I know that the computers, they've been doubling their capacity for years and years, every second year. And since the term IT was coined, 1956, it has doubled its capacity 30 times. While our brains are still at the same level as they were when we built the pyramids. That's creating digital anxiety. And some people even believe that computers and the human mind will be equal in all aspects in just a few years. Some people feel digital anxiety because they're missing out on all the opportunities that are out there because they don't have the time and the money to grab them. And some people feel digital anxiety because they know exactly what to do and they have the digital strategies all set. But they don't know how to convince the people around them in their two large organizations. And some people just feel digital anxiety because they don't know what to do. They're sitting there doing nothing because they're waiting for the disruptive technology that are taking them out of business, just like the fridge took the ice industry out of business uh, 150 years ago that we heard about yesterday. And just like the P2P technology killed off the music industry as we know it. And that's creating digital anxiety. It's a bit like being in the universe. This is the representation of the universe as we know it, with 55,000 galaxies uh, as we've registered so far. And this is a representation of the current state of the internet. They're both alike. It's beyond comprehension. And as we're traveling there towards the unknown in the digital, digital space, in our small pods, this is what we feel. So, those who said that digital marketing is rocket science, you're actually wrong. How many out here in the audience are trained astronauts? I don't... Ah, there, are, there is one. Not that many, anyway. So, no wonder that we all feel some kind of digital anxiety sometimes, is it? When we look at this area, we can also call it digital complexity, of course. It continues to, to grow, much like the universe also continues to grow all the way from the Big Bang some 14 billion years ago. But is there anyone that can have a full view of the complexity? Yeah, a couple of years ago there was, but nowadays not anymore. This is what we think. Why strive for simplicity? Since the Industrial Revolution, business has seen three stages. Produce, sell, innovate. First, those who could produce the most, the fastest, won. Then, marketing made a difference, and those who could promise the most won. Today, we have infinite choice. The true winners make the exact same thing as their competitors, only better, simpler. 
Simplicity is the new innovation. It saves time, is more effective, and results in happier people. Simplicity is good for business. The thing is, it isn't human nature to simplify. Just look around you at most of the things surrounding us. So we need to force ourselves to break the typical thinking pattern to find the simplest solutions. Simplicity is the new innovation. That's a really beautiful promise, isn't it? You think? But is that for real? We at HiQ, we are some 1,400 employees, and for the last 20 years, we have been exploring this area. Our focus is to simplify people's lives. And here comes a couple of examples of that. This app was launched yesterday. Somebody downloaded it already? Yeah, a couple of them. Please download it now. Uh, it was a good timing of Collector. It's the uh, customer here, the company. It's a Swedish financial company. And they have done this app. It's called Betalkoll, and you can download it now on App Store. It's a simplification. And what does it do then? It does exactly what the name says. It makes you have control over your payments. By just taking a picture of your invoices, or you can also include emails and e-transactions e into the app, you can let collector take control of the full process of payment of invoices, and you can also decide when and how to pay the invoices. And if you don't have the money, you can pay the later, the bill. That's good, isn't it? Here's another example. The connected home. It's happening a lot in this area. And what kind of services can we do here? Samsung is doing a lot, and all the big brands is doing a lot of new connected services. You combine mobility, connected services, and also a connected product. Haiku got the opportunity to start to work in this area uh, for Electrolux. And the first, our first assignment was to uh, visualize what kind of concept and what kind of stories you can create. And we did that at the IFA Berlin Fair. Uh, and the big thing about that is that we really have to show things that you can also do, that you can implement. We cannot speak about visions and future. We have to show that we can also implement the stuff. That was probably the reason Heike was chosen. Because we can combine the capacity of a full digital agency, but we also have the technology know-how. So now we continue to work with those kind of products, connected servicing solutions. Here's another example. Picture yourself a store. A customer enters the store. This is my old running show, by the way. Uh, and he or she picks up a, a product. The product is connected. He looks at the product and interacts with it in some, in some way. Then he, he or she suddenly gets a deeper explanation about the product, how it works, its features. And we, when you turn it around, you see uh, other information on the screen. You do the same thing with all the products in the store. And you use the technology that's already there. Can you do this? Yes. Please combine the high queue uh, area just outside. We can show you deeper how this works. But the cool thing is, this is for the, for the guy going into the store. But think of, about the shop owner. The shop owner can then trim the offers, uh, the products, and learn how the shopping behavior is. And then think about combining this with e-commerce solutions. Then you can build really cool stuff, and you can do that today. This, those are cheap sensors and cheap infrastructures that's already out in the, in the society. Samsung yesterday spoke about a technology that's invisible. This is actually a, an example you can build already today with technology invisible and making the shopping behavior and, and making, making the shopping better, actually. Minus, you had another example, didn't you? Yes. Let's talk about Swish. <clears throat> 
Money causes all sorts of problems, doesn't it? In particular, physical money. In, in Sweden, we are pretty good at uh, using money digitally already. At 60, 70 percent of all the transactions is not invol involving physical money. But when we do need physical money, we use these gateways. They're actually transforming digital money to physical money. And then you go and buy something, and the guy who sold your stuff is transforming his digital money to, to, uh, his di uh, to digital money again. And, and this is a problem. So I'm afraid the physical money is going to disappear. It's just a matter of time. And why? In Sweden today, we got like 85 billion Swedish crowns in coins and bills out on the market, and it's decreasing. Just three years ago, it was over 100 billion. Half of it is used, at least as we know it. The rest of it is, I don't know, out in the woods, in the mattresses or in the dark side somewhere. And the cost of keeping the systems with tellers, with exchanges and all the security is about 13 billion Swedish crowns. That's not a good business. So physical money will disappear. And uh, Swish. The first time Swish turned up as an idea was actually in Barcelona at the Mobile World, World Congress at the back of a receipt. So the story goes. And it's a textbook example why you need inspirational venues like this. You know, you bring people to another context and you, they meet other people and they get inspired and every now and then it comes out good inventions. So that's really cool. But I think the bankers who came up with the idea, the, the most impressive thing was really that they managed to convince not only one but six banks to go ahead with the project. You know banks, they're not like volcanoes of innovation. It's like well, they rather stick to the business model that they've had for like 10,000 years. So that was really cool. And of course, our, we brought to the table the ability to make the idea real. So we built the stuff. And we are, of course, really proud of that. But if you look at Swish now, it's like 1.7 million users in Sweden. It's 100,000 transactions each day. And it's grossing about 1 billion Swedish a month. That's pretty cool, pretty, uh, quite a big figure. But if you compare it to algorithmic trading, uh, algorithmic trading systems or stock exchanges or telecom systems or even the, the system that King talked about yesterday, the, the figures are rather small. So, so Swish in itself is a, a rather standard system. But of course we're very proud of it and it has run the 1st of December this year. It will be up and running for two years and without major hiccups at all. And you know what the coolest thing is with Swish? That the word Swish is actually a candidate to become a word in the Swedish dictionary. And that must be the ultimate recognition for any service. Are you tired of always missing those deliveries when you're not at home? Yeah, uh -huh. always, yeah, and you may be feeling the same way, so you may want to consider <laughs> investing in a Volvo in the Seriously? future. Web producer it's Alexander Bahu uh... is here now to explain. Imagine your car acting as a pickup and drop-off zone for packages. You too... never have to miss a delivery again. That's the idea behind the Rome delivery concept from Volvo Cars. The automaker has demonstrated with a trial group of customers a new service that would let consumers have their online orders delivered right to their car, no matter where they are. When ordering items online, Volvo car owners in the group were able to choose their vehicle as a delivery option. The driver was then notified via smartphone when a delivery company wanted to pick something up or drop something off at their car. Once accepted, Volvo's digital key technology let the delivery person open the car and leave the package, all of which is trackable on the driver's smartphone. The digital key... Yeah. They're good at buktalning. Yeah. This was a movie. We tried to show it again. Are you tired of always missing those deliveries when you're yeah. not at home? Yeah, uh -huh. always, yeah. And you may be feeling the same way, so you may want to consider investing in a Volvo in the Seriously? future. Web producer Alexander Bahu is here now to explain. 
Imagine your car acting as a pickup and drop off zone for packages. You never have to miss a delivery again. That's the idea behind the Rome delivery concept from Volvo Cars. The automaker has demonstrated with a trial group of customers a new service that would let consumers have their online orders delivered right to their car, no matter where they are. When ordering items online, Volvo car owners in the group were able to choose their vehicle as a delivery option. The driver was then notified via smartphone when a delivery company wanted to pick something up or drop something off at their car. Once accepted, Volvo's digital key technology let the delivery person open the car and leave the package, all of which is trackable on the driver's smartphone. The digital key then disappears after the delivery. Now, the pilot program, Volvo says, is one example of how the company is exploring the potential of connected cars to help simplify our lives. To read more about Rome Delivery, head to our homepage, WXYZ.com. For 7 Action News, I'm Alexandra Bahu. What do you guys think? Crazy, huh? Actually, I think that's actually genius. You love it. That is just it. stupid enough to be genius. <laughs> <laughs> I like that uh, you know, description. What are... Yeah. Uh, Volvo Cars launched this service in, in uh, Barcelona, Mobile World Congress, this year. And after that, it has got huge impact in TV channels, media, newspapers all over the world. Yesterday, or two days ago in, uh, in Barcelona, the Gartner Summit, that, this was one of the key notes that was taken. And why is this so interesting? It's a true example of partnerships, that's for sure. In this case, it's Volvo Cars, Ericsson, and HiQ together do the service. But it's also an example of speed to getting out something in the market from an ID, an innovation, a quick out, and re really test it out in the market. But third, of course, the most important, it's a new way to deliver goods in the future. We can use this kind of platform, and it's possible to do now. To summarize, we have been speaking about interesting projects and concepts, but are there really a cure for innovation? Is there, is there a recipe? We don't think so. What do you say, Minus? A real recipe. But we think there are three key ingredients to get out really good innovation. One, great people. We always look for great people, both at our customers and at our employees. But how do you find them? And what, 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 is a great, what is great people? We think it's people who are having both really good knowledge area and academic merits, but also a complementary area with a passion. Taking a system developer, for example, that have a passion for being a songwriter, or taking a, a copywriter that have a real passion of writing computer game in her spare time. That's people that can make a difference. Two, speed, great speed. The Volvo example was one example of getting really quick out in the market with new innovation, with great speed. But how, how do you create great speed? You have to have an understanding of your customer, but you also have to push the customer with new solutions. That's one thing. You have, always have to look for the solutions on different angles, and you also have, always have to look for simplification. Then you can get out with great speed on the market. Third, experience, great experience. That's something that's really important. Haiku have been working now for 20 years in the area of IT, R&D, and marketing solutions. And one example of a really bleeding edge technology project is the JAWS 39 Gripen uh, simulator. Uh, but it's also an example where you combine bleeding edge te technology with real user experience. Uh, and then you get the simulator. And we were thinking before this CME, what, what should we show in the high stand? stand? And, and then we, we thought, what the heck, why not bring the real stuff? So we brought the simulator. It's outside, you can try it, and it's a real experience. I think you should try it. Minus. Yes. What do you say to summarize this? Let's finish this off. <clears throat> What's the cure to digital innovation, uh, to digital anxiety? It's not a pill, 
It's not a therapy. There's no such thing as a quick fix. It's an attitude. An attitude towards simplicity where you go hard on your ideas with great experience, with great people and with speed. And if you do that and cut away what's unnecessary and focus real hard, you will get what you want. And if you want to fly into the digital space, you need to learn how to fly. And then you need to do what the Wright brothers did 100 years ago. They had experience, they were the great people, and they had the speed. And once they realized that flying is all about simplifying the wing profile, it all happened. They were the cure, and so can anyone be, and so can you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I'll, uh, we'll, I'll just shoot uh, a comment or a question. Uh, you say people, and one thing that I've experienced with, with Haikyuu is that you have a very strong culture. There is a culture of doing things together, and I had the, uh, the HR director from Haikyuu on, on another event, and she said, no, we try to find people's passion and let them do a lot of that at work. So there's, I don't know, how many rock bands do you have at the Stockholm office? Uh, Twelve. The, or 13. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's always a concert going on, or there's something else going on, and they recruit other people. So Dre again, the rock star, he plays in one of Haikyuu's bands, and they're helping him with things and so forth. Can, can you sort of share some of the things about that culture? Because I think that is actually what gets the speed and the experience done. I think that is the, if there's one thing, it's probably a cultural and people thing. Could you elaborate? Well, <clears throat> it's, it's all about letting people get them together and meet. It's because it's when you meet the new ideas come out. And, and creativity, you know, it, it, it's very, very difficult to sit on your own, in your own office and come, come up with new ideas. It, it's when people meet, then they grow and eventually start thinking new thoughts. So that's what we believe in. And in particular, since, since our employees are all over the place, it's extremely important to bring them into the office to uh, attractive things to meet, to, to educate, to have parties and whatever. Our Christmas party is strategic. <laughs> <laughs> we, we spend a lot of effort on that. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah and also think it's uh, to create those kind of environments, you really have to combine different cultures also. I spoke about uh, before the digital agency meeting the high tech. Mm. That's, I think it's a, a good way of creating a new kind of environment that really is more innovative. And that's something we really work a lot with in IQ, to combine those cultures to, into one culture, into one more innovative culture. But you also formed a partnership with Svea, the advertising agency, because you believe that communication in the, in, in the future is the new IT. It's, yeah, well, in, in general, it's, it's, as I said, it's very difficult to come up with all the ideas in itself. So you have to bring the right people with the right experience and have the right speed. We believe in that very firmly. And, and, and in, we have all sorts of partners. And in Stockholm, we work with Svea because they come from, from the, the uh, commercial world and, and know things like value proposition and, and uh, branding and that sort of stuff. So uh, we'll, uh, fly, we'll fly yours, all of us, later on, and we'll talk mm -hmm. to you a lot later. Thank you very much for sharing. Keep hey, up the good you. work.